Hey folks, this is the Wolf Driver. You're live with us on the CNO Canal Towpath Trail. And uh, we've got about five miles in right now on a scheduled 15 to 20 mile journey. I am with the Wolf Pack. I'm going to turn the camera around to show you. And right here, I'm actually uh, sitting in the back seat. Here's Rhett. He's giving Jag some water. Hey, Rhett, say hi to the folks. <laughs> That's Chase. I'm in the back seat, actually. Uh, Red's going to do some wolf driving himself. So hopefully I can give you another perspective here. Uh, Zorro is to the left, right where I have the camera at. And here's the pretty princess. Princess, can you say hi to the folks? <laughs> She's chilling. Uh, beautiful day out here. We are on the Potomac River. And I'm giving you shots of the Potomac right there. And I'm going to take around and to the left of us is actually a dry what's now a dried canal now the canal is dry because it's obviously not of any use at this point in time it was built in the early 1700s late 1800s for a means of uh, transportation for materials and people but as the time went on it took so long to build the canal path and the whole canal that the railroad overtook them, and therefore there was no need for this anymore. So now today, it's become a wonderful historical trail, place for people to get out. It's 185.5 miles long. It goes from Georgetown, D.C. into Cumberland, Maryland. And it was originally supposed to be about 400 miles and go from Rhett's climbing in the bike there. This bike's a little difficult, a little tricky to get into. Um, but it's very comfortable. Uh, take your time, right? Give another couple minutes. I'm going to finish my story and relax here for a few minutes. So, um, I've got a weak connection. Hopefully, uh, you can still hear us and see us. So, right now, I'm looking ahead. Red is, as I said, in the driver's seat. Zorro's to the left and Chase is to the right. What's the uh, mileage read below the zero, Red? It should say 20-some miles. Okay, we've got about five and a half miles in right now, and originally I, prepared, I did a broadcast earlier. Unfortunately, this is a new technology, as I was explaining, so the mic wasn't uh, as hot as I would like it to be. It was very low broadcasting uh, volume-wise. So what you can do is you can type in a question at any time. I'm not driving. I have the ability to answer it live on the air right now, and as the sun sets, we're going to keep rolling. We do look for old remnants of structures, which are fairly abundant on this trail. So we get some glimpses of old lock houses and even regular houses, and some are somewhat dilapidated, to say the least. But we will attempt to actually go in some of them and find any possible paranormal activity that may be taking place or anything else that might be lurking in the darkness. We use infrared thermal cam we use infrared cameras and thermal imaging cameras. Thermal imaging um, you might be familiar with is kind of cartoony looking but uh, gives you hot spots. That's how the, the hotter the object the redder or brighter it may appear. But actually paranormal activity is usually cool spots. So you'll see darker shading with brighter color surrounding it. And last week we went into an area that was pretty uh, spooky, to say the least. <laughs> Red explored it, and uh, we have some interesting images and video that I've posted. And we're still evaluating and hope to assemble a better video rendition that's kind of noted where all the paranormal activity we feel took place is highlighted. So you can see Pretty Princess is taking a breather on the ground. Zorro's getting some loving from Rhett. Chase is looking up and saying, let's go. <laughs> and the Jagster's just standing still and wants to know when uh, when he can eat his dinner and go to his bed. Because that's all Jag likes to do is sleep and eat. <laughs> but Jag's got to get his exercise in. So that's where we're at right now. Love to hear from you. Uh, we're using some fairly sophisticated equipment to make this broadcast happen including uh, cell phone boosters and other electronics because this area is semi-remote and because 
there's not much signal, it's harder for me to make this broadcast. So I'm going in and out, and hopefully uh, you'll bear with us. As we move further along this trail, you'll be able to hear me clearer and see a better picture. Uh, usually we're using a spinning camera, so the camera will rotate and give you a 360-degree view. But right now, because of the audio portion, that camera's down. So I'm, again, sitting in the back seat of the dog cart <laughs> and uh, broadcasting to you live from there. Zara's taking a breather, too. So we stop every two to five miles, depending on the conditions, and uh, as dictated by the dog, but that's on average, for them to get some water and a rest. Today is, um, right now it's probably in the low 60s, but it was uh, pretty at the warm of the day, the warmest part, it was probably close to 70. So the dogs are, you know, to them this is hot. Anything below uh, 10 degrees is hot. <laughs> So and they still have their winter coats on. They have not shed yet. They haven't had, blew their coats for the spring. So they're, they're definitely warm, so we keep that in mind and stop and water appropriately. I've been doing this for 20 years now with Huskies, so I kind of know the ins and outs and what to do and what not to do. And I'd love to share that with you. So if you have any questions besides this activity, you can look through my Facebook feed or other social media and even my websites to see the other activities I do with them, which is plentiful. Got some ducks I hear in the water. Give me a shine down to the Potomac.